Hello everyone, it's me Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Welcome to something that I'm going to explain because it's a very important day uh, for the entire planet. Uh, for those of you that don't know, for since this channel has been around since 2017, every year I've done the Astro Awards and we vote for the biggest missions of the year. This year, uh, so this is the third year now that we're doing the live in-person awards. Uh, we're going to be live streaming. I'll be putting that up here this week, the live stream link, so you can watch the actual awards show, but it is in person uh, January 17th and 18th in Austin, Texas. So if you want to come to this award show, and it's actually a full two-day conference uh, with a lot of awesome people that you might recognize their names and faces. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a two-full-day thing. Uh, but what's important about this, and the reason that we're, we're doing this is, you know, in the past we haven't really explained like which missions are what and why and how. And so in the link in the description, there is uh, just a simple uh, like Google form that you can fill out. And I want you to vote for the most. Now here's the important three words. The important words are uh, the most inspirational, the most innovative and important missions. So keep that in mind, right? Keep in mind that those are the things we're looking for in the biggest mission of 2025. Um, pre previously, in, in the last two years, we've given out, or maybe just last year, maybe last two years, we've given out uh, special awards for the ones that are the, specifically the one that is the most inspirational, the one that we consider the most important, the one that we considered most innovative, and then one on top of that that represented like just kind of the biggest mission of the year. This year, we're just, we're, and the Astro Awards, we don't have categories. We don't do categories. The idea is to give an award when there's an awesome mission, right? That's, it's simple. I want it to be simple. I want it to be, hey, you did an awesome thing. Come up here and accept an award. So keep that in mind. There's not like the coolest mission that went to Mars. You know, there's not like the, the funniest uh, astronaut that last name starts with a G. You know, it's, it's like, no, we are going for just simply the most inspirational, most innovative, and most important. So these are the ones that are more or less nominated for one of the most of those three things, and we're picking one. So I wanted to give you a rundown on kind of each of these missions so you can grow more familiar, so you can then uh, have, I think, a little bit more context when you're voting, because I want this vote to be meaningful. I don't want you just to, you know, see the first one that you recognize, because there's some big ones that you might not be fully f aware of. So let's start off with, let's just go through these. I've got, what I've did, just to try to make it a little bit unbiased, for the most part, I'm pulling up the Wikipedia article, just so I can show you kind of some generic things about it, trying to not pull up a bunch of hype, because I could pull up, you know, really cool, like, videos that are like, check this out, and then you get really excited. I probably will do a little bit of that, because the Wikipedia article is a little boring. But, okay, the first one that's nominated uh, for the top award of the year is Firefly's Blue Ghost. This was their first lunar lander mission. This is the first commercial lunar lander to ever land on the moon, ever successfully, I guess I should say, uh, with the <laughs> pointy end up, flaming end down, right? This is the, the first one to do that. Um, it landed on March 2nd. It launched in January. So this is like a 2025 through and through. That's always another hard thing about, about these missions and about the stuff is Sometimes a mission launches in one year and then kind of does the science the next year, or sometimes it does science for seven years and then all of a sudden, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit, then all of a sudden you get the science back and a paper comes out and it's like, okay, well, was that a mission for this year or are we now celebrating the paper that came out because it's a big discovery? Again, we'll talk about that more. Okay, so Blue Ghost, this is Firefly Aerospace made the, the first successful ever lunar landing with a commercial lunar lander and they did this for the, some of the big things is that they did this for, what was it, $93 million. Um, that's incredible. I mean, that's like a tenth the cost of some of the, you know, the earlier uh, Apollo lunar landers and stuff like that. Uh, Apollo era lunar landers, obviously not the human landing ones. Um, but it's just like, it's, we're working on this CLPS program, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services. And they're the first company to actually do it. They're the third one to try, first one to nail it. So it's awesome. It was a very successful mission. Uh, just shows kind of this commercialization of spaceflight. It shows a decrease in, uh, you know, cost. It shows that a, a plucky, relatively small team of people can do it for, you know, a, a small fraction. 
of the cost of, of what has been done traditionally. So that's why this is considered one of the most um, important, innovative, and inspirational missions. <coughs> Sorry, missions of 2025. Um, Firefly Airspace, so just keep that in mind. Blue Ghost. Next one is From 2. I'm <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I have been battling a cold for about a week. Let me tell you, I, I'm going to throw my bias in here and, and kind of explain why I think this is maybe one of the most underrated missions. Maybe not ever, but darn close to ever. So this year, what was it in March? Yeah, April. Uh, well, March, local time. This year, humans flew around the poles of the Earth. We've never done that before. If you think about like every spaceflight mission ever, no humans have ever flown around the North and South Pole. Until this. That should be enough said. Um, I think, you know, if you really think about it, that's a huge deal. Um, it had always been proposed to be flying out of Vandenberg um, on first, you know, there's the the Titan Gemini, the, the mole program and things like that. There was the space shuttle was supposed to launch from Vandenberg, but come to find <coughs> find out SpaceX now has enough performance out of their Falcon 9 to launch out of Florida and do a dogleg maneuver and still be able to launch crew to a polar mission. So um, from two, in my opinion was, yeah, was, is a really big deal. Um, and what's cool is, uh, another reason that I think this will be cool and, and I think relevant too to the Astro Awards is on Sunday we're actually getting an exclusive look um, at some of the footage that they shot. So, um, the uh, I, I think it's uh, Yannicka is uh, is an incredible cinematographer and so some of this, the footage we haven't even seen yet. No one's seen the footage from this mission of humans flying over the poles. So she's going to be actually doing uh, a presentation and we're getting a first glance, a world premiere premiere glance of the first time humans have flown over the poles, um, which will be incredible. I really think that's going to be um, something pretty spectacular. So that's another f <coughs> fun thing. I don't want, want that to sway my opinion on... <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I swear I wasn't coughing at all earlier. I don't want this to sway my opinion for why I think this is uh, such an incredible mission. Overall, this is just one of those I'm like, yes... Finally, we're doing something cool and unique and seeing a, a part of the Earth from a new perspective that we've never seen before with human eyes. Just think it's really cool. That's from two. Um, again, I think there's still more to learn about it and more to see. Um, and when they... Uh, it's going to be really cool to see the, <clears throat> the footage from that. Um, oh, here, speaking of... Okay, this is, this is footage from the outside of it um, that was released that showed the views from the, the cool, this is a, a time-lapse um, where the really cool views are when it goes over the poles, you just see, I don't know, it's just, wait, I guess kind of this is like the, the main view, but I don't know. I think this is a uh, pretty spectacular from two. There you go. Uh, let's go to the next one. The next one being, okay, so Escapade and New Glenn 2 are wrapped together in this one because they're the same. The second launch of New Glenn uh, is the one that we all probably remember just happened last month. Um, well, I guess, wait, last November. So I guess now it's January. It happened two months ago. Uh, it's the first time that New Glenn launched and landed a booster. So that was a really big deal. I'm sure we all remember that. I'm sure we've all seen the footage. Let me see if I, yeah, this is, you know, again, trying to not do a total hype vid. But, you know, just as a reminder of what that looked like, it was a pretty spectacular mission. Uh, first time seeing another orbital booster land after Falcon 9 and Starship. Um, really only the second, you know, <coughs> orbital class rocket to actually do this. Sorry, orbital class company to land um, a booster. So... And then it is very, very massive. So this was awesome. I think we all are familiar with this. But then the important thing to remember is this is also the launch of Escapade, which is a to like on its own, forget the New Glenn part and the exciting part about New Glenn. It's kind of a bonus because it's it also launched two spacecraft to Mars cheaper than ever before. Again, kind of this com commercialization that uh, helps bring the cost down um, immensely. I don't remember what the total price was. 
Um, I think they had the price. I mean, it, it's like, I'm going to say dirt cheap. In the world of space flight, dirt cheap. Um, definitely, the, I think, the cheapest thing flown to Mars. So so when you're looking at our, our Vody thing here, um, keep in mind that, that we're kind of having to lump these two together. Escapade and New Glenn launch and landing. It's kind of a two for one. That makes it a little bit more, uh, and again, remember, we're, we're framing this in inspirational, innovative, and important milestones in spaceflight, right? So keep that in mind. That's, it's hard. I Honestly, I go back and forth. Okay, next, these two are actually, in my opinion, these are two of the most important things to ever happen in science almost. They're up there. However, I don't know, it's, these are both old missions. Like, Bennu touched down on, on or I mean, uh, OSIRIS-REx touched down on, on Bennu in like, what was that, like 2019 or something? And it landed like three years ago now? Or something like that. Like, it's it's been a long time, but the science is still coming through. And same with Perseverance. Perseverance has been on Mars now for however many years, you know, five years or whatever. Um, and so let me, let me just show you that so these were these were big things because you know perseverance found a rock with leopard spots and that might not sound that exciting however this is the best marker basically so far of uh of what could have been something with potential life ish you know signs of ancient <clears throat> microbial life of course very significant i mean if this turns out and this is, so I don't know how to treat this. I don't even know, honestly, I don't even know if this deserves necessarily an Astro Award. It's an old mission. We've already celebrated the mission of Perseverance. However, I think it's also important when a, when a mission has science come through and be published and it's out in the public, then what, you know? So, I don't know. These two are both, and the other big one, this, this one's probably bigger, was... Um, sugars, you know, found in stardust in, uh, asteroid from asteroid Bennu, which was Osiris Rex. And basically they found what could be building blocks of life more or less on, on asteroid Bennu. And, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know if it gets any bigger than that really, you know what I mean? But also it's not that mission was already innovative. Like we already celebrated that mission for being innovative and per perhaps inspirational and perhaps uh, important. And so now it's like, what do we do now that there's science that we have and it's been collected and it's been published? Is that still worthy of an Astro Award to be the top one of 2025? I don't know. Maybe I should almost add another question. Do you think that these missions deserve to be recognized in the 2025 Astro Awards? Um, cause that's almost, that's kind of where I'm at almost. It's like, um, oh, Escapade was about 75 to 90 million according to Rob Speed in our Discord. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, that's, that's what, that's what we're, that's what we're here to discuss. So maybe what I'll do, uh, is check back on this. I'll, as soon as I'm done here, as soon as I turn off this live stream, I'm, I'm going to add another questionnaire that says, do you think missions like Perseverance and Osiris Rex's that have been out for a long time deserve uh, recognition at the 2020, well, six, I guess, Astro Awards for best mission of 2025? That's, it's hard. I don't know what the right answer is. Um, and remember, we're, we're really trying to find the one that encompasses inspirational, innovative, and important. So, I don't know. Yeah, so, I, you know, I'm seeing people saying maybe stick to space flight missions, not science. But I don't, I don't know if that's right either, because what's the point of the space flight without the science? You know what I mean? We, I love, trust me, I love giant rockets. I love space flight. I love the engineering. But it's all pretty pointless without the science. So, you know, it's, it's basically the difference between sandbox mode with Kerbal Space Program versus the career mode of science. <laughs> oh, man. So that's where we're at. Hopefully this has put into context those missions, though, to give you a little more information. Uh, maybe there are some missions that you 
had heard of but didn't quite know the implications and the importance of them. Uh, and if there's another one, they, I have room for others. If we see a mission over and over and over, you'll notice that there's this particular rocket that's not on here at all, Starship, because frankly, Starship didn't do anything new in 2025. Besides, if we're going to give an Astro Award away to a payload bay opening and a dummy payload going on a suborbital trajectory being successful, I don't think that... Is that's not inspirational, innovative, or important in my mind. And yeah, it's, uh, you know, it might be a, a thing that we mentioned in like the, what's that called? The honorable mentions, you know, or something like that. But that's not one of the biggest missions of the year at all. Um, you know, though still, I mean, I still think the Starship missions and, and the prototypes and all these test flights are some of the most fun to watch. Definitely some of the most entertaining. Definitely some of the most uh, important long run. Like when they get this all figured out, it'll be game changing. It'll probably be like, whoa. But for now, when you have a year of uh, of no real significant progress over 2024, when they, you know, they, that was the first catch of the booster. First time they really made it a soft splashdown. So 2024 saw all the big milestones of Starship. Um, the next big milestones would be orbit and or, you know, deploying real payloads. You know, 2026 could be the year of, of Starship. Um, because it has some big things as orbital refueling and things that are being demonstrated that are new and, and significant. So, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, I, I think that's all I have to say. And I'm excited to hear more of your opinions on, uh, and see the votes come in with what you think is the biggest astro, the, the biggest mission of the year. Um, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be pretty close, honestly. Uh, and don't forget, again, one more time, astroawards.live. Uh, check it out. Uh, we have uh, some incredible people that will be joining us up on stage for two full days of panels and hangouts and meet and greets. So if you've ever wanted to meet Scott Manley, for instance, uh, yeah, get on it, astroawards.live. Joe Scott's going to be there. Um, Joey B's going to be there. Amy Shearer title. A lot of incredible people. So January 17th and 18th, get your tickets now because you were – Less than we're now less than two weeks away from this, so uh, you better get on it. And hopefully, we'll see you guys in Austin, Texas. If you know anyone around Austin or anything, send them the links, it all helps. Uh, we definitely have some more general admission to sell. Um, and hopefully, you know, these this is a very big undertaking for us and our team, months in the making, and a lot of money uh, is on this. So, I'll take all the help I can get if you guys can send some recommendations. We definitely could, um, it'd be nice to have more. More of the general admissions uh, filled up, so tell a friend. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna change the thing right now to, to make it so we can kind of talk about what to do with those science missions, but yeah, nice and short. That's gonna do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Goodbye, everybody.